Hello, I'm Bill Farrell. I'm an educator, graphic designer, and illustrator who's located in Southwest Florida. I hold a BFA in illustration from the Ringling College of Art and Design, an MFA in illustration from the University of Hartford, and currently I'm seeking my MFA in graphic design from Savannah College of Art and Design. As an educator for 12 years, I have won two National Bright House Cable Teaching Awards. I was awarded our district's highest award, the Superintendent Medal of Manatee County. I have led my students to two national and five state championships in technology and design, and my students in my classroom have earned over a million dollars in scholarships in less than five years. That being said, I have a vested interest in both education and design. I believe I'm in a unique position to see how they come together as someone who's in the trenches every day, practicing and implementing design theory with best education practices. But I have a concern. That concern being that schools are under tremendous scrutiny and pressure to produce testing results, while modernizing to meet the demands of evolving technology and community needs. Instructors are required ever increasingly to integrate technologies into the classroom, such as PowerPoint, smart boards, online quizzing and testing programs, and various other technologies. This integrated instruction often comes at a price of being divorced from the rudimentary design skills necessary in order to implement them properly. While books and punctuation rules are at the fingertips distance at nearly every education institution, design rules are not. Design concerns such as typographical issues, the experience of the user interface design, often fall victim to the meeting of testing and technology demands. This is even greater concern since many of the secondary school instructors are often creating their own materials based upon lack of funding of textbooks or their course uniqueness. This thesis will examine how a better understanding of UX and design skills incorporated into instruction can benefit the student learning and create better awareness for the graphic design field. This, this is a PowerPoint slide of one of the most important scientific discoveries in human history. And it is written in a font that looks like Garfield the cat's voice. I hate Mondays. Okay, we get it. Or do we? I mean, look at this font. I mean, is this the font that you want to be informed Hey, you're fired, or you've got a terminal illness. Nah, I don't think so. Something just does not feel right about using this with such an important discovery. If it's not right there, then why is it right here? We can do better. Making changes to education isn't just about the style of typography, but addressing our students' needs appealing to what Howard Gardner called multiple intelligences. Our brains access how we learn in a variety of ways. Our experiences play a large role in how we process information. Part of accessing how we learn is tapping into our creativity. Creativity expert Sir Ken Robinson challenges the way we're educating our children. He champions a radical rethink of our school systems to cultivate creativity and acknowledge multiple types of intelligences. It is here I saw an opportunity to combine the latest in UX theory and education. All the time in education, we are setting up visual systems to help our students process information, to grab their attention and realize they are social animals. Our students have limitations, just like any other type of people do. They will make mistakes, but they need to be encouraged to try to make those mistakes in order to grow and to learn. And we also understand in education that human memory is complicated. These are all principles from UX design. More and more as an educator, I'm being forced into instructional design. And not because of my background as a graphic designer, but because of lack of funding for materials and resources. So I'm being forced to create my own visual designs in my room. I have to worry about their functionality and how my students are gonna visualize the data. I need to worry about the information architecture, about how it fit in, fits in with what I taught before and what it's going to fit in with what's coming later. I need to wonder how my students are going to interpret it how, it, how it's going to have meaning or context to them. How are they going to use this material? 
and how are they going to interact with it and use to do, interact with others. And ultimately, what is my strategy for creating this material in the first place? What are my goals and outcomes? What are my students' goals and outcomes? These are all UX principles that I'm encountering every day in education. This is what it means to be an educator in the 21st century. We are already utilizing UX principles in education, but we could probably do it better. I mean, we're asking for our students in the future to be creative, to critically think and problem solve, to think about their social responsibilities. Uh, we're asking them to be digitally literate, how they can promote and keep moving on with that information, and how they can collaborate with others. Again, all UX principles. And these are not just my concerns. I'm not in a vacuum. Almost every teacher I work with has had the same concerns and will relay them back to me. And while there's this expectation to teach our students to be these things, there isn't a lot of training in order how to do it. Also, beyond that, the solution so far when we try to address these problems is to throw more technology into the mix, not training us how to teach it. Armed with a rudimentary design skill set, and a basic understanding of UX theory, teachers would be better prepared to create an optimal environment for their students learning for this future that we tell them that is coming. And there's already an agreed upon path of where we're heading towards with education by this agreeing of using this set of standards called Common Core. There are three top skills they're saying that every student and instructor needs to have developed. And that is adaptive problem solving, collaborative communication, and digital fluency. Again, we're talking about fundamental UX skills. And if we combine them with some just basic typographic knowledge, you can make a world of difference. It doesn't take much to show why Comic Sans can sometimes be a very bad idea. Now there's some stereotypes to actual type design um, that have been used since I was a kid about what you should be using far as when you write papers. So much so that it's become a joke. There's actually memes about it. However, this study is not a joke. This was taken a wide breadth study of months professors and colleges across the country to show what fonts they preferred when papers are being written in their classroom. I used my own high school as a testing ground about what teachers thought about the typography that they use in their classrooms. Again, this is important because our school is recognized throughout the nation as being one of the top schools in technology from the Technology Student Association. That's a, there's a membership of over 1,500 high schools in that organization. Our school also received an Excellence in Education Technology Award from the International Technology and Engineering Educators Association. So I felt our school was a great baseline to ask important questions about the type of typography they use. For example, do you think about the kinds of fonts that you use? Well, a majority said, yes, I choose them. In fact, 75% said so. 20% said no. And the other 3%? Yeah, I don't put careful thought into it, or it depends on what I'm typing. Next, I asked, do you use different typography for presentations, example, PowerPoint, than you use for print-based assignments? 12% said, no, I use the default choice. 77% said, yes, some fonts are better for print and some for screen. 3% says it doesn't matter. And 5% said other. Now, I have to be honest, I was pretty happy to read that fonts are voice and it depends on the statement I'm making. One person said, I don't use typography. Hmm. Well, they typed that, didn't they? And lastly, it said, no, I usually use my preferred fonts, which are the not the default ones. Again, that's an interesting answer. Next, I asked, do you require that students use certain types of fonts when writing papers? Example, Times New Roman. Yes was 51%, no was 33%, and other was a whopping 14%, much to my surprise. That 14%'s answers are actually quite interesting. One actually said, no papers are assigned in my class, however, if I did, it would require Times Roman. Another said, I don't have students type papers. I had two not available answers. One person actually typed, it does not apply to me. 
someone said, Times Roman. I thought that was part of the question. Anyways, and someone wrote simply, sometimes. Lastly, I asked, have you used Comic Sans or Times New Roman in the presentation in the last year? 68% replied yes. 12 or 22% replied no, and 9% replied other. Honestly, I got my favorite answer out of this where I heard, I've used Times Roman plenty, but Comic Sans is for toddlers. Someone wrote, I love Comic Sans. Easy to read and looks nice. I had a few Calibria, uh, callig uh, calligraphy, and then someone wrote Ariel and Broadway. What I got most out of this survey is that I did find that people do have an interest. They do care about what typography and design that they use. When most people would assume, oh, they're too busy teaching science or math or history, they do care how that information is delivered. Therefore, there might be room here to do a better job with teaching those who are creating the information. And a lot of it's being modeled on how our students are testing. This is a sample question from Florida's FSA test that each student is required to pass in order to graduate. Teachers are being asked to utilize similar typography in their testing so that the students are in a familiar environment when they go to test. I'd argue that's certainly a step in the right direction over the past. One of the most important tools I've had as an educator in my classroom is PowerPoint. It's an extremely versatile program that even helps you set up templates in order to help you be a better designer. However, even with the best intentions in mind, even PowerPoint can run amok. I mean, how is someone supposed to digest all this information? This slide is taken from an AP history test in order to prepare students for their AP exam. Again, look at the legibility and the readability of the way the typography is being used here. I would argue that these slides could be saved with some basic fundamentals of design theory. The design world can make a huge impasse into education by sharing some basic design thoughts and theories in a way that's easily accessible to educators. This is crucial because not only does it give designers an ethical opportunity to assist in education, but it creates awareness for the effectiveness of our field while teaching our children. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to take bad design to help transform it into something much, much better. The classroom of the 21st century is transforming, and we are needed in it. Beyond just PowerPoints, there's other innovative technologies being used, such as apps for testing and quizzes. A great one is called Kahootit where students can use their own devices to answer interactive games and quizzes in order to study. It's almost like a video game type atmosphere where the students are learning. I'm a strong advocate of this program as I've used it myself. And the beauty of this, it's using strong UX and design skills to be easily accessible, easy to understand, easy to interface with, and rewards using time and time again. Our classrooms are becoming more visually interactive using technology such as smart boards. Again, visual design is becoming more and more important in what the students do every day as they interact with more complicated technology. It is almost as if there's this rule, the more complicated the technology becomes, the more visual the interfaces become for us to understand it. And it's really exciting that students are interacting with this technology in such interesting and powerful ways that means something to them. What you're looking at here is an interactive smart board. The students can respond on screens in their room. It's like a digital chalkboard, if you could say. And you can move objects and watch TV and interact with the internet all in the same place. The teacher can interact with a cellular structure or anatomy in front of a science class or dissect the human body in front of the classroom on a screen instead of, oh yeah, imagine this is happening in your head through a textbook. But it's not just our classrooms getting the upgrade, our textbooks are too. One company, Arisma, is one of those companies helping bring that to life through the use of augmented reality. Augmented reality allows you to use a screen or a lens to look at the world around you 
and to see a uh, virtual format interacting with that world. So for example, see you can see the bone structure of this guy's hand to explain exactly where the radius is. This is the future where we're going, and I'd argue it's already starting to happen now in our classrooms. Augmented reality brings to life the 2D world into the three-dimensional world by using technology. It allows us to see things from all different angles. Your blueprints can come to life. One of the books I use in my classroom is a Scott Robertson's book, How to Draw. It's a perspective drawing book by a guy that's a leader in both the real industry and the concept art industry. His drawings are highly technical and based off of real technologies and sometimes imagined ones. And what's beautiful is not only he's creating these vehicles or devices, he's also building the environments for them as well. Again, some of his designs that he's created have been brought into the real world. What's cool about this book that we use in my classroom is you can take your phone, put it up to one of the images, and a video will appear of not only how he did it, sometimes, but sometimes it will appear a 3D model of the object that you're trying to draw. Like that drawing has come to life that you can look at from any angle, that you can test and make sure that you are doing it right. Or you can use it as reference to help build ideas of your own. What all this teaches us about augmented reality, this is another example of user interface design making education better. And again, we could go further. No, instructors do not need to know uh, typography the way that they may need to know, for example, the periodic table. But like I said before, most educators have punctuation at their fingertips, even the math teachers and the art teachers. Taking this into understanding, why can't we do the same thing with des basic design rules as we do with basic writing rules? At some point in the development of language, punctuation probably wasn't uniform or standard. This probably evolved with the technology and the spreading of the understanding of how important writing actually was. Well, as we're starting to realize that design or uh, technology literacy is almost as high as what writing literacy was in the past. We are going to need a set of standards and rules. I love this quote that says, the real problem is not adding technology to the current organization of the classroom, but changing the culture of teaching and learning. Again, what you're talking about is the user experience in all of this, which is the student and the educator providing that experience. No educators do not need to know the anatomy of typography. However, just simple, simple basic rules in typography can go a long way with how they're sharing and giving information. If you're arguing to your clients that these subtle differences make a difference, then why isn't it true for the way that we're educating our nation's children? I wonder if theory put into practice could make our students better at reading or more interested in reading because it's easier for them to do using basic reading principles and design principles. I cannot emphasize enough how much I don't see good design and the majority of the instructional material that I encounter every day. Remember, we're changing from a world that looked at information like this in education to this. And if we know that most great language training begins at a young age, why wouldn't that also be true for design training? I think about where Leonardo da Vinci was at the Renaissance when he was surpassing his master Verrocchio. We can address fundamental design issues early and head on to create a better society for us all in the future. One possible way of helping unify our design rules is at an agreement at the AIGA. The AIGA is supposed to be a beacon, constantly reminding us why we have chosen this profession, and one of their goals is to fully realize that design has the power to create change. I can't think of a better place of creating change than education. The AIGA Design Educators Community seeks to enhance the abilities of the design educators and educational institutions to prepare future designers for excellence in design practice, design theory, and design writing at the undergraduate and graduate levels while supporting the fundamental mission of AIGA. While this is a noble goal, I would argue that they need to even start earlier because the students are getting certified in these technologies earlier. If we build good design skills and curriculum early on, 
then you're going to build good habits for the future. We have to plant those seeds. Like I said before, the classroom's only going to become more and more interactive, more and more technology, and we need our place at the table in order to ensure that that design for our nation's children is the best that we can provide. It's in our ethical interest to do so as graphic designers. And ultimately, I want to leave you this quote from Pablo Picasso, who's once said, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. Thank you for giving me your time, and I hope I've left an impression about why we need to incorporate UX design and design rules in our nation's skills.